part three of our conditional loops series and we're going to be looking at a couple of examples of conditional loops so let's get into our first one have you heard of the Kulax conjecture it's also been referred to as the Ulam conjecture um, so those of you who don't know about it this is a mathematical sequence some guy uh, basically formed this conjecture and uh, there's a lot to read here from Wikipedia about what exactly is uh, Colax conjecture. And I keep asking, Mr. Long, why are we doing maths? Well, this is a nice example because it's, it's talking about a sequence that will happen. And basically, the summary of the sequence, if I can find it, there we go, the summary. If you take any positive number, like I'm not talking about like they're, they're good about, they feel good about themselves, I'm talking about a, a positive number, like a plus number. Um, so if we take a positive number and it is even, you must divide it by two. So there's that rule. If the number is even divided by two, if it's an odd number, you triple it. In other words, you times it by three and you add one. And you keep doing that to the number. Keep doing it. So if it's even divided by two, if, it's, if it becomes odd, then do that and keep doing it. Eventually, the rule says that the sequence will eventually reach a one. That you will eventually get to a one. As long as it's a positive number and it's feeling good about itself. So let's see what that means. Okay, so if we have a... We don't know how many times it's going to be doing that sequence. So obviously we're going to use a conditional loop, like a while loop. And we're going to need to get this number that we are checking. So let's say our numbers are six. We want to check our numbers are six. And we want to keep changing our num until it becomes a one, basically. So if it's an even number, how do we check if it's an even number? Well, we divide it by two. And if there's no remainder, then we know it's an even number. So our num mod two, that tells us that our num's even. If it's even... We need to halve it. In other words, divide it by two. Now, I want to keep it as an integer. And in the moment I use a divide by two, it's going to become a real. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to use div instead. Arnam div two, which means how many times can two go into Arnam? Which if it's even, it's okay because it's going to go into it with no remainder and there won't be any decimal parts. So that's fine. So Arnam div two. So at the moment, Arnam is even. We divide it by two. So if it was a six, we would divide it by two, it becomes a three. Okay, great. Now what happens if it's odd? Well, if it's not even, else, the only other option is that it's odd. And if it's odd, I don't even need to check if it's odd, because if it's not even, it's odd. If it's odd, then we take that number, we multiply it by three, and we add one. You'll notice for both the even and the odd, we take, we make the change, and we store it back into our num. So our num is equal to our num, multiplied by three plus one. So if you take that six, for example, Okay, 6 is even, so we divide it by 2, so it's a 3. Now, we keep doing the loop, so it's a 3, so it's odd now. So 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is a 10. So now it's an even number, it goes through the loop again. Now it's, now it's an even number. So now we divide it by 2, so it becomes 5. And so now we check, okay, 5 is uh, even, uh, or it's odd, sorry, so we times it by 3 plus 1, so 5 plus 3, it's 5 times 3 is uh, 15 plus 1, that's 16, so that's even. So now 16 divided by 2 becomes 8. Uh, 8 divided by 2 becomes 4. It's even. Uh, 4 divided by 2 becomes what? Uh, becomes 4 divided by 2 becomes 2. And then 2 divided by 2 become, it becomes 1. And what was our sequence? We said we must repeat doing this until our num becomes a 1. So while our num is not a 1, move to the opposite. While our num is not a 1, keep doing the sequence. The moment our num becomes a 1, we can stop. Okay, so that makes does that make sense for our sequence? Now, what what's the initialize test change? What's the RTC principle? Well, it's our num. Our num we we started with a default value, or the user can give it, for example. So it's got a default value before it enters the loop, and then we test. So while it's not a one, keep doing the loop, and then inside it we change it, but we change it in two ways. We either divide it by two, or we multiply it by three and add in one. So it doesn't matter that we've got multiple ways as long as it's changing. And it's going to keep doing those changes until our num becomes a 1, and that will make it stop. Okay, so that's our example. So let's go try it out in Delphi. So let's go look at Colax Conjecture. So let's go look. So here's the code. So I've asked the user to input a value via input box. So we're going to give it a default 6, and we're going to display, hey, there's the 6. And then we're going to say, okay, while it's not a 1, we're going to divide it by 2. Oh, well, it's not a one. First, check if it's if it's even. If it's even, divide by two. And if it's not even, then we're going to multiply by three and plus one. And after each time I change our number, I'm going to display our number so I can see how it's changing. The reason why I displayed our number at the top there because I want to see what we start off being. I want to see the six, and then I want to see it become a three, and then a, nah, a ten, sorry, and then so on and so on. So let's go see what it looks like. If we run it. 
but let's see it's compiling it's not responding but kicking eventually there we go okay so colas conjecture if we give it a six you'll see that it became a three because it was even so we divided by two then it became a 10 so then we divided by two again and then we became an odd so we times three so it went up and then because this was 16 became eight four two and became one and that's when it stopped let's give it another number i want to see what let's give it oh, 15. let's see what that does oh but it goes big and then it goes small and it goes big again but eventually it will eventually get to one and it does actually work so colax conjecture is true if we oh i can't say it's true because i've checked two numbers but it seems to work if you take any number and you apply that those rules you'll get to one and so there we go we got colax conjecture using a while loop let's try another example let's try a guessing game maybe play the game where you're like i'm get, i'm thinking of a number you must tell me what number i think and, and we're going to give clues on to what that number is so if we're going to have a, a guessing game so we're going to guess a number from one to 100 we're going to generate a random number that the user needs to guess so the user must guess this random number so the computer will generate uh, we, we're thinking from the computer's perspective uh, we're going to generate a random number and then the user must guess it so we're going to ask them what number do you think it is and then we will give them hints and it, we will get the user to guess and we'll look at that guess and say hey if that guess is too low then we'll say hey you, you're too low so then hopefully they'll guess a, a bigger number and the, if they're clever enough and if we say hey that no that number's too high then hopefully they'll go a bit lower and then at some point hopefully they'll get enough information that they can actually get it right and if it get, if they get it right then we can stop the game because they've got the answer so i think that's how it's going to work yeah so so how do we do this well we're going to generate a random number using random 100 now remember random 100 generates a random numbers from 0 to 99 so if i want to go from 1 to 100 i'm going to plus 1 on so it goes from 0 to 99 so 0 becomes a 1 and 99 becomes 100 great and then we're going to repeat doing something what are we going to repeat we're going to ask them to enter in a number okay the user must keep keep asking them a number keep guessing keep guessing and we check that guess we're going to check if it's see if our num the number that we've got is bigger that means their guess was a bit small so therefore we can say hey it's too low way too low and then the other option or else if the number that we've that the random number that we want them to guess if they guess a number that's bigger than it then they've gone too high say hey too high and then the other options obviously if they got it right if it's not too high it's not too low then obviously the only other options they've got it right okay so there we go we're going to keep doing that and, and when do we want to stop well we don't want them to keep guessing after they got it right so therefore we need to say hey, okay, when they get the number correct when the number that we've generated randomly is the same as their guess we can stop Oh, why do we want to carry on guessing the same number doesn't make sense okay so what's the initialize change test in this case now the little thing about this is because we use a repeat loop we don't actually need to initialize our guess because we're getting a value for our guess before we do the test but you could give a default value i guess equal to a, a completely number that will never be in the sequence a negative 999 would be a good initialization of our guess but you don't have to because we're using a repeat loop so our guess will get a value in the repeat loop and then we're going to check our guess with our num and that's the our guess that is changing that we want to keep while it's changing keep on changing keep on changing that's the value that's changing and then we test it to see if it equals to our num that's what's going to tell us when we must stop or not so let's go do this in delphi so yeah we've got our guessing game i'm going to double click here so we're going to generate a random number and what i've done is i've actually showed what the random number is so we can get like a little cheat code so i want to see if it's actually working because the computer is storing this random number. I want to know what it is. I know it's a cheat. So we know what the answer is going to be. But it's for us to be able to test. And then at the end, we can actually just comment that out. That's actually why I think a lot of uh, games have cheat codes. Because it's for testing purposes. So when the guys are going to test, like for example, a game, they want to, they don't want to have to replay the whole level. They can want to be able to skip levels and be able to get to places so they can test the, the, the thing that they're working on. So that's actually, I think, where cheat codes originate from. Um, not so that you can cheat at your games so we've made a little cheat code and we are going to repeat doing this code where we get a guess from the user and check if it's too low if it's too high or if it's correct and if it's correct we say hey it is correct and we display it in the memo control so we can see our progress and we're going to keep going until our num is equal to our guess so that should work 
So let's have a look. So we're going to enter the guessing game. So I know the answer is 76. That's the answer. Now let's pretend we don't know it's 76. The, the correct strategy would be to go halfway. We're going to go 50. So we know that that is lower than 76. So it says, hey, it's too low, which is correct. So then I'm going to go 75 because that would be halfway between 50 and 100. And it goes, hey, it's still too low because it is it's below 76. Now let's pretend we don't know it's 76. Halfway between 75 and 100 would be like maybe 87. Would be a nice halfway point there. Ah, now it's too high. So now we know we need to go between 75 and 85. Let's go to 81. No, it's still too high. There we go. So we know it's between 75 and 81. So let's go to 78. We know that that's still too high. Oh, well, 78, 75. Let's go to 77. I'm really dragging this out, aren't I? And then, oh, there we go. 76. We know this is correct. Booyah, it stops. It says it's correct. So there we go. Another thing you can do, which is quite cool, we can have a, maybe a guessing game where you only get uh, 10, count, uh, 10 uh, guesses. So we can have a count. And we are going to initialize our count to a zero. And every time they do a guess, we are going to increase our count. So it's going to be start we, we initialize to zero and we make every time they guess one two three and we want to repeat this until they get the guess or until our count equals 10 so whichever one happens first so that way if they guess if they take too long to guess the number it'll stop as well if they get to 10 guesses this will also make it stop so that way we can say okay if if they didn't get the right answer then you know you lose so in this way, if we do the, so let's have a look quickly. We're gonna eighty-one is our answer. So if we give all the wrong answers, fifty. I really feel like it's in the fifty somewhere. Fifty-three, fifty-four, fifty-five, fifty-six, fifty-seven, fifty-eight, fifty-nine, 54, 54, 54, 54, there's no more guesses after that. Oh, you stop. You. I should probably have a message there. Hey, you took too long. Because you missed a long. Okay. So there we go. So there's a nice little feature that you can have to make sure that the game only goes a particular length. So you can have multiple criteria. Just remember with our criteria when you use ors or ands, put your conditions in brackets. Hope you enjoy those examples. And remember to get the other videos in this video series. Go to our YouTube channel. Click on the playlist so you can see all the different topics that we cover. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.